Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. Halifax-based Northern Broadside has paired up with York Theatre Royal for a revival of an early comedy from J.B. Priestley, When We Are Married, directed by the Northern Broadside artistic director Barry Rutter, who also plays a small but significant role in the play. The play centres around three distinguished Yorkshire couples in 1908 who are about to have their social positions threatened as they approach their 25th wedding anniversaries. Here, playing the role of Clara Soppit, actress Kate Anthony is still most famous as Pam Hobsworth in Coronation Street, but has performed extensively on stage, TV and radio. I spoke to Kate during the second week of rehearsals, and I asked her to explain a bit about the play and the part she is playing. When We Are Married, basically, is a story about relationships. That's what I think, anyway. It's just set in a different time to the one we live in today, but it, but it has all the relevance of relationships today. Um, and it's about, it's about these three couples who are very big in the chapel and very big in the community, and then something happens that sort of really rocks the boat big time. Um, and it's the, it's the fallout from all of that. And you see these... You know, they're quite pompous and overstated and very confident with themselves. And you just see how it all crumbles away. And it's fascinating to watch. And then you see how the relationships, each individual couple, how their relationships respond to this. So it's a really interesting piece. And it's also very, very funny because you can... I'm sure a lot of people in the audience will be watching it and say, you, you do that, you do that. You know, it's, it's that type of thing, uh, which, is, which is great. It's, it's a fantastic piece to be involved in. My character, Mrs. Soppet, is, uh, she's a joy. She's an, well, I say she's a joy. She's a bit of a bully. Well, she's a lot of a bully. <laughs> she's not very nice. And if it was pantomime, I'd definitely be the villain. So um, it's a great, great part to play because baddies are always the best people to play. Yeah, most fun, aren't they? Ah, oh, definitely, absolutely, yes, yeah. It's, it's great fun. But again, she does get her comeuppance at the end. So, you know. <laughs> it's one of those plays that's become a bit of a classic. It's, it's one of the um, popular plays for, for amateurs to play. Did you know about it before you were cast? Yes, yes, I'd known about it for quite a few years. Um, because it's just such a beautifully written play. And it's, it's always something, you know, I would... I'd love to have been involved in. So when Barry phoned me and said, I'm thinking of doing When We Are Married, what do you think? It was just like, oh, yes, absolutely. It's too good an opportunity to miss. Because I think it, it can be done on so many levels, this play. You know, there is a depth to it. It's very funny on the surface. Of course it is. It's a comedy. And it's, you know, but, but as with all of Priestley's writings, there is a huge depth to it. And, and it's something you can really, really get your teeth into. And also for theatre, it's a massive cast. You know, we've got about 14, uh, just, I think 13 in the cast, 14 in the cast. So that's a joy in itself to be able to, to do a play with all this huge amount of people in it, you know. Yeah. It's a great, great play to do. Well, that's something that uh, Broadside is quite famous for, um, having large casts. What's it like to tour with a cast of that size? It takes a lot of, a lot of uh, planning. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It's, it's, that's the great thing about Broadside is, you know, they, they do, they won't skimp, they won't, you, you know, there are lots of two-handers and four-handers that they could do, but it's lovely that they still insist on having, you know, a, a huge, if, if the play needs a big company, then it has a big company, um, which is hard, obviously, because, you know, today it's all about money and, yes. the, the, you know, the cost of, of A, you know, paying for all the actors and B, making sure there's all the costumes alone and, you know, all those types of things. It's a huge, huge expense, but I, I think that's one of the joys of broadsides. They, you know, the play will not suffer because of the financial costs type of thing. So that's, that's the great thing about it. Yeah, you mentioned the costumes. Have you got some nice Edwardian dresses for this? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I love a good frock. I love a good frock. These are fantastic. They've all been made, handmade for us, by the wonderful department of um, York Theatre Royal. And they've done the most stunning job. I mean, it, they are exquisite. The colours and the fabrics. And, you know, not saying the corset's too great to wear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you find it hard to breathe. But, gosh, it gives you a great figure. And, yes. um, and the, the costumes are, are absolutely magnificent. Really are. Yeah. 
Does that help you get into the part, the, the, especially the course? Does that make you feel like those characters more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, we've been obviously we've been rehearsing now for this is our second week, third week. Gosh, and um, we've been rehearsing ourselves, and then and then on Tuesday, yesterday was the first day. We thought, well, well we're just rehearsing corsets, <laughs> so we put the corsets around our clothes. Oh my goodness, we couldn't sit down, we couldn't stand up. It was. It was it was very, very funny. We and we realised actually there's got to be a bit of compromise with our movement because it gives you a whole different way of sitting, of standing, and you know, and you can't help but be elegant in those amazing costumes as well because we've all got trained. You can't gallivant around like you're in a pair of jeans, no. you know, and you, you sit straight. We all, you know. Yes, it's it's uh, that's a piece of theatre in itself, moving the clothes around. <laughs> yeah, because quite often when you're rehearsing a play, you're just rehearsing your normal clothes until the last week, but it's, it really does help with, with certain costume, doesn't it, if you, if you can get them oh, in yes. advance like that. Yeah. Absolutely, shoes and corsets and, you know, practice skirts if you've got a long train. Always a good idea to, to use them whenever you can. Um, so that you're not tripping over the back of your skirt when you stand up or, you know, yeah. all of that type of thing, yeah. You mentioned Barry, Barry Rutter, the, the artistic director mm-hmm. of Northern Broadside. He's directing and appearing in this. What, what's the rehearsal room like when, when Barry's directing? Um, loud, <laughs> firstly. Always loud with Barry. But, but great fun. I mean, great fun. And uh, very generous. He's a very generous director. Um, I worked with him before when we did Rutherford and Son, yes. but he didn't direct that then. That was uh, Sir Jonathan Miller directed that. So I never got to actually work with him as a director. But in this, um, Barry's got the best of both worlds because he plays Ormond Royd, who's a photographer, who comes in in very isolated scenes. So he has, you know, three very isolated scenes apart from one at the end. So it's great for him because he can be in it and also direct at the same time, which is it's great to work with, with Barry because he's so um, he's such a generous director. He gives you lots of time to work on things. He he never tells you what to do. He you know you discuss it, you work things out, but it's always loud. Yes. <laughs> it's always loud with Barry. But that you know it's great. It's great fun. Great energy and uh, and it's lovely. Yes, and a lot of the cast we know each other you know we've worked together in different plays or we know friends of friends so the hardest bit is getting us to stop chatting at tea breaks really (laughs) well uh, at least three of you have had regular parts in coronation street but i'm not sure whether you actually met on the street did you were you all at different times well we we were yeah we were saying this the other day because in in uh, in coronation street i'm actually sue devaney who's playing annie uh, I'm her stepmother. Right. <laughs> if we go, if we go back to Soapland, I'm actually her stepmother, which because I and my character ended up marrying Bill, who was her father, yeah. and uh, Steve, who's playing my husband in this, who played uh, Windass character. We actually were on the street at the same time, but we had very little. Our characters didn't really mix. Right. So. Um, you know, we knew each other in the green room, but never actually, actually did. I don't think we did anything on on set together. Right. This play, Priestley tended to set things in in the past to him. Uh, so it was thirty. He set it thirty years earlier, but it's also what eighty years old now. Yes, it is. Do you think it still has something to say to a modern audience? Because society is very different. Morals are very. It different is. Now, I mean, it? obviously, things are different now. It's. You know, of course it is, but you know, I still maintain it's a play about relationships. The 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 initial, you know, the initial twist in the play, obviously isn't going to be relevant to today. But the the relationships and the fallout and the way the the couples interact with each other is as relevant today as it was, you know, 1938 or 1908. It is it is something that everybody will be able to connect with on some level and it's not just the three couples of course there are all the other couples there's the young lovers in it there's the housemates you know all these different characters coming in and out and I think you can I think anybody can I think that's the that's the thing with good writing I I think it boils down to that after being in this business so long I I realize more and more it's about the writing yeah. If you have a good play, if you have a good piece of television, radio, if the writing's good, it will stand up any decade, any time. Yeah, and it makes it easier to play as well. Oh, so it? much easier to play. Yeah, so much easier to play. 
because words say it for you, you know. Yeah. Do you have any favourite bits yet, either to play yourself or to watch other people do it in rehearsals? Oh, there's lots. There's lots of great bits. I mean, I, it's difficult to comment on me because I'm in it, uh, yeah. so I can't really <laughs> get, you know. But there are some uh, bits that absolutely, I mean, you know, usually in rehearsals, you laugh the first few times you hear something or see something, um, and then it dwindles because obviously you've heard it, you've seen it so many times. Yeah. But there are still moments in this piece that absolutely have all of us <laughs> hysterical. You know, it's so cleverly written and it's so witty. It's yeah. so witty. And there are some fantastic performances, you know, that make it even better. Yeah. Yeah, you've got quite a good cast, haven't you? Uh, quite a... Uh, well-known in some parts, but... Uh, yeah. A fairly, a fairly experienced cast. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're all, we're all actors of a certain age, <laughs> shall we say. <laughs> Which is really nice when you're in a company and that happens. <laughs> you don't feel... You don't feel like some old fogey wandering around at the back you know it's yeah. the six the six people in the couples we're all of a certain age and um so it's great it's it's lovely it's lovely to work with and we're all you know i mean actually my best friend happens to be in it yeah. which is you know coincidental but fantastic for me so um uh, adrian hood um so it's yeah it's great it's great it must make a difference when you're touring as well because you're basically living together for weeks aren't you absolutely yes and you know i mean you you spend a huge amount of time together because if you are away from home you know you have these long days when you're not doing matinees you just have an evening show so you think well you know you all go out you have little day trips out <laughs> and you, you go to the cinema or you find you know you explore local places where you are yeah. so you do spend a huge amount of time together so it's important you know you have to get on um and invariably you do you know which is great but it, it does help certainly when your mates are with you it's lovely yeah. you know it's an extra treat how is this? How is working on something like this different from doing one of the regular TV series? I mean, do, do you miss the regularity of something like Coronation Street, um, or is it a bit confining after a it, while? It can be. It can be. I mean, I loved. I loved working on Coronation Street. It was great. You know, I loved the character and the people I was working with. It was fantastic. But, um, you know, it was. It was, I was only meant to stay six months and stayed about four years, I think. So I'd, I'd really... It was difficult for me as well because I live in uh, London and, and I have a family. So, yeah. you know, the commuting was very difficult. And I really enjoyed it. Um, similarly, though, I love theatre. You know, it is very different. It's a very different medium because we have a story that we tell every single night... Whereas, you know, when you're filming television, it's, it's much more, it's shorter scenes. Everything now, I think, I think scenes for TV especially are being written quite short. So it's, it's much more, you learn it, you film it, you're off, you're on yes. something else. You know, it's very, very quick. Yeah. It's very quick, um, which is great when you're playing a regular character because you have your character there and you know how they're going to react. You, you know, it's become second nature. It's more difficult if you're going in just to do odd scenes in different shows because you don't have the time to get to really, you know, make a rounded character. Yeah. Um, whereas theatre... It's fantastic because you can get to work on it and every single night it's going to be a different show because you don't know how the audience will react. And, you know, you, obviously you, it's a different show for the actors every night. So, there are, I mean, I like both sets of... People often say, what do you prefer, you know, television or theatre? Uh, or indeed radio, because I do radio as well. And I, I love them all. I think they're all great. They're very, very different. You yeah. know, I can't compare because it's just... A, they're very different mediums. Well, you seem to have done all of those right throughout your career. Really. Some, some people who've just done television, they find it difficult if they just drop into, into a theatre show, but you've, you've done both of them right through, really. Yes, I have. I've been very lucky, very lucky that I've, had, I've been given that choice, you know, to do that. Um, I think it's probably... I think it's fortuitous that I came out of drama school when I did, because when we came out, you know, there are a lot of theatres doing rep and... And there was, you know, I was trained to work in theatre, so it was, it was great. It's a brilliant learning ground. Yeah. Um, and then just as you, you know, as I got older and moved into, into television, you sort of have to retrain almost. You know, I learnt, I learnt a huge amount doing the street, but just because of the, you know, the relentlessness of it yeah. and the quick turnover. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a very, very different way of performing and working. Um, but yes, I, I mean I do. I love. I have been lucky. I have to admit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Hey, television, it seems to be getting worse for that, particularly the regular series, that, like the soaps. They, they seem to be trying to pack more and more episodes into yeah. each week now, don't they? Yeah, they do. Well, I've, that must yeah. be hard work. It is. It is hard work. I mean, when I was on it, it was five episodes a week. So, you know, there's a, a huge amount of script learning going on. Um, and you're, you're filming, of course, out of sync. So you, you'll be filming, a, you know, an episode that is three weeks ahead of what you filmed in the previous morning. Yes. You know? <laughs> so it is, it is quite difficult. I mean, I take, you know, I, I know soap actors sometimes get criticised, but it's, it's incredibly hard work, incredibly hard work. You don't get the luxury like we have in theatre of sitting down, talking about the characters, you know, working out their relationships. And, uh, you know, it's much harder. You have to do as much work as you can outside of, of television. You have to do it by yourself. And sometimes you just don't have the time because you've got, you know, five episodes or whatever to, to learn for the next day. It's, it's tough going. It is tough. Yeah. Rehearsals are a rarity, really, aren't they, in television? Very rare. You don't, you don't really get rehearsals now. You walk on set and you have a, a camera rehearsal for the cameraman, obviously, and then that's it. You shoot. Yeah. So it is. So having something like this is brilliant. It's lovely because you can really get to talk about the play and the characters, and you know, enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. So where are you up to in rehearsals now? You're in the second week, are you? What, what's yes. actually happening? Yes. Yes, we are. We are. We've got. Um, we're just starting to put it all together. In fact, this afternoon we're going to run it for the first time in its entirety. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be fun. Yes. <laughs> because you know, sometimes you're not. Sometimes when you rehearse individual scenes, you, you think, hang on a sec, whereabouts does that come in the play? And then before you know it, you sat watching, especially when you see it for the first time run together, because you get so engrossed watching other people's scenes. You know, there are times when you sit there, and I've been caught out because they go, you're on, you're on. It's like, oh, gosh, it's me, sorry, <laughs> you know. Um, so it should be good fun. We are, we're looking forward to running it today. It'll give us a clear picture of where we need to work on and, you know, what's working well and what isn't working so well. So, yes, it'll, it'll give us a good idea. But we're sort of at the place we should be for this, you know, for this time. I mean, we don't open till September the 9th. So the worry is sometimes if you get it too soon, you know, if it all clicks in too soon, it can become a little bit, you know, by the time you get to your opening night, yeah. it's too slick almost. You need to have that, that extra buzz. That, because you, you never know, especially with a comedy, it's very difficult to work out when the laughs are going to yes. come. And an audience will, will trip you up every single night. You'll, you know, you'll get a laugh in one place one night, you wait for it the next night, and it won't be there. It'll come somewhere totally different. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to be really on your toes. Yeah. So I think, I think we're sort of... I think Barry's quite pleased. I think we're just where we should be at the moment. Oh, that's good. Do you have anything, anything else apart from this that you're working on at the moment or you've got coming up? Um, well, I've got, uh, I'm on, um, yes, I'm on actually a radio show at the moment. I do a, a radio show called Tom Rigglesworth's Hang-Ups, which is on BBC Radio 4 on Thursdays, which I love doing. He's great, very funny comedian who writes about his mum, phone calls to his mum and dad. So I play his mum in that. So that's on at the moment. And then this will take us up to December. And then I'm not sure what's going to happen in the new year. I have a daughter taking her GCSEs uh, next year, so stressful time. I will be. It's a stressful time, <laughs> so I will be at home making sure there's, uh, you know, plenty of TLC for her. So I, I'm, I imagine I'll be sticking to television for the next six months, beginning the first six months of next year, so that I can be at home for for the kids. Really, yeah. you know, it's um, they used to me being away, but I think GCSEs and stuff like that, they need their mum. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yes. So I shall be there to get the brunt of it all, no doubt. When We Are Married by J.B. Priestley is at York Theatre Royal until the 24th of September 2016, before touring to Hull Truck Theatre, Theatre Royal Bury St Edmunds, Rose Theatre Kingston, West Yorkshire Playhouse, Stephen Joseph Theatre in Scarborough, Cheltenham's Everyman Theatre, the New Vic Theatre in Newcastle under Lyme, Liverpool Playhouse and Northern Broadside's own Viaduct Theatre in Halifax, where it closes on the 4th of December. For more information, see www.northern-broadsides.co.uk or www.yorktheatreroyal.co.uk. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.